I am now in Alexa in northern Xinjiang. Just before we started filming, it snowed heavily here. Now according to our measurements, the surface temperature is minus 12 degrees Celsius. This huge range is deep and wide enough to meet the full performance of artillery with a long range. Moreover, we are able to test artillery and shells at the same time, and can also test the wind and sand resistance of artillery. Today we are to test the firing accuracy of the new 120mm vehicle mounted mortar, and test the running in of the projectile. Later, we will also test a satellite guided projectile performance. We'll see if they can meet our expectations and real operational needs. This new 120mm vehicle mounted mortar system, which is being tested, was made by Lingchuan Industry, an old-fashioned scientific research and production base for professional suppression artillery. It inherits the high-angle and direct-aim shooting capability of traditional mortars. On this basis, the Warrior's high-mobility off-road chassis, advanced fire control system and automatic loading system are installed. What significant performance breakthroughs will such a transformation bring? In order to better interpret the combat power of this mortar, today we deliberately choose the new and old mortars for an intuitive comparison side by side. Now we're building a firing position for traditional mortars. After the traditional mortar is placed, it is necessary to carry out the aiming operation. The mortar is set in place by the operator. The whole process takes about 20 minutes. Now this is the new 120mm vehicle mounted mortar that does not need to build a launching position at all. After receiving the target information, the onboard fire control system automatically solves complex equations and outputs various parameters, and the mortar can be automatically adjusted in place with just one click. The whole process only takes about 30 seconds. The two mortars had just fired a shell, respectively. Let's take a look at their accuracy results. This position is the impact point of the traditional mortar hit just now. The green flag in front is our target center position. I used a simple walk for rough measure to compare the difference in firing accuracy between the two mortars. The impact point of the projectile from the conventional mortar is about 67 steps from the aiming center. However, that's where the new 120mm vehicle mounted mortar shell hits, so close to the aiming center. Our question is why are the same type of shells fired, but the difference in accuracy between the two mortars is so huge. Indirect aiming fire is a ballistic characteristic unique to mortars. Unlike direct aiming firing artillery, the aiming point of a mortar and the target are not in a straight line. Sometimes the gunner can't see the target at all when aiming. Therefore, the mortar often is called a curve killer. In order to shoot with a perfect curve of the shell, the level and height of the two legs need to be adjusted so that the gun body forms a shooting angle. The seemingly simple adjustment actually implies a set of complex ballistic mathematical equations and calculation processes. This increases the difficulty of aiming and shooting. For traditional mortars, the complex operations of aiming, adjusting, correcting, and shooting must be completed manually in a very short time. Its shooting accuracy and first hit rate are greatly reduced. This new vehicle mounted mortar has eliminated such shortcomings. The advanced fire control system and servo system act as a super brain. After receiving the target information, it can automatically solve the shooting elements and parameters, adjust the gun in place with one key, and can perform instant stop and instant fire. Greatly improved the combat response speed and strike accuracy. The vehicle mounted mortar has two advantages. First, it is highly maneuverable. The survivability of the battlefield is very high. Secondly, it is equipped with an advanced fire control electrical system with a high degree of information feed. 
Its combat response is fast. This vehicle-mounted mortar is equipped with a high-mobility off-road chassis, coupled with an efficient anti-recoil device, which greatly eliminates man-made effects and increases accuracy considerably. Today, the new vehicle-mounted 120mm mortars are doing quite well. In fact, this is not only due to his fire control system. The developers told me that the high accuracy of artillery shooting is also closely related to a key component of the artillery. That is the barrel of the mortar. But in fact, for military workers, the processing of artillery barrels is very difficult, and it directly affects the shooting accuracy. What kind of secret is hidden in the machining of a 120mm gun barrel? Next, I will take you to the workshop for the processing of artillery barrels. Lingchuan Industry is the largest mortar R&D and manufacturing enterprise in China. Almost all the fire support weapons that accompanied the infantry during the construction of the Great Three Line were delivered from here to the troops. Even in today's increasing demand for weapons and equipment development and production in modern warfare, Lingchuan Industry still masters the unique core technology of a suppression weapon system. In the international market of military products, Lingchuan Industry stands an outstanding international competitiveness. This is the barrel machining workshop of Lingchuan Industry. The fineness of the barrel machining directly affects the accuracy of a gun. There are usually hundreds of processes in the machining of the gun barrel. Several of them are crucial. This is a barrel rough cast with a caliber of 120 mm. The surface is rusty and must be dealt with. The craftsmen are now processing the surface of the gun barrel with a machine tool. After machining, its surface will become very bright. More importantly, it makes the outer rim of the barrel more compliant. The key for accuracy of a gun is all on the machining of the inner barrel of the gun. The rough cast treated with the outer has shown its original metallic luster. This is gun steel, one of the highest strength alloys, known as the king of steel. For a long time in the past, gun steel was once the bottleneck of Chinese artillery production. Because nickel is an indispensable element in this gun steel, it can greatly improve the toughness of the gun steel. In China, nickel reserves are not abundant. However, Chinese military workers are never intimidated by difficulties. After the arduous efforts of scientific researchers, a series of new gun steels have been successfully developed, which opened the door to Chinese artillery production. The barrel of the new 120mm vehicle mounted mortar uses a special alloy steel with better mechanical properties. The inner hole of the steel billet with a length of about 1.7 meters and a total weight of nearly 100 kilograms is about to be machined into a 120mm large caliber gun barrel. This requires a special machining process. That is deeply boring. The boring accuracy of this machining process is within 0.01 millimeters. Now let's see how boring they are with this steel billet. The difficulty of deep tube boring is to be precise because of its requirement of machining accuracy. At present, the minimum tolerance of this process is within 0.01 millimeters. And the inner wall of the board barrel needs to be as smooth as a mirror. From the entire machining process, we found that the working state of the entire boring cutter in the barrel could not be seen at all. This is equivalent to punching blind holes. From the beginning to the end, the master worker can only feel the slight vibration of the tool rod by hand to judge whether the cutter and tool are normal during the cutting process. To master such a skill, the workers have to practice for many years. In order to create a strong physique, 
for the new 120mm mortar that can withstand a large impact. The structure of the high chamber pressure part of the gun barrel has been improved. It has a high safety factor and can withstand higher chamber pressures. The almost customized like finishing and turning of the external connection of the gun barrel laid a solid foundation for the ultra-high strength and reliable connection between the various parts of the gun barrel. The machining accuracy of the outside of the gun barrel is closely related to the assembly of the mortar. It has extremely high requirements on dimensions, tolerances, etc. Mr. Li Qingchao must ensure that the error of each gun barrel turned out here should not exceed 0.08 mm, which is less than the thickness of a standard printing paper. His speciality is a boring tool machine working at Lingchuan industry for 30 years. By observing the color and shape of the scraped iron chips, he can tell whether there is a problem with the tool cutter. During the machining process, Li Qingchao has to check the condition of the tool at any time. A good cutter can make tooling more efficient. The sharpening and installation of the cutter is an absolute secret. The tooling cutter in front of him was made by a special method. When this cutlery is sharpened, if the sharpening is not good, I may not be able to cut a gun barrel for a day. After years of experience and improvement, I now can cut a gun barrel in two or three hours. It is precisely because of the meticulous machining and ultimate pursuit of every part and every process by Chinese military workers like Li Qingchao, results in our artillery performs on the battlefield with exceptional accuracy. I was overjoyed when I saw on TV that the barrels I made by myself driven past through Tiananmen Square. I am very proud, I think 30 years of perseverance has not been in vain. I would like to continue to pass on my superb skills to next generation workers. This is the Artillery Assembly Workshop. Various important parts are always visible. Wouldn't they be the perfect artillery if we piece all together? Well, we also have to address the recoil issue. When the artillery is fired, the gunpowder burns to generate gas in the barrel, forming a strong pressure. The moment the shell pops out of the chamber, a huge recoil force is generated. The recoil is like a chronic disease that seriously affects the combat effectiveness of artillery. A mortar shell fired can generate hundreds of tons of recoil. The dangers of recoil are obvious. How to effectively eliminate or reduce recoil. In fact, these two devices are needed. This is the backstop device, that's the re-entry device. These two devices are combined together to reduce the recoil force. I don't know the detail. I still have to ask the expert. Hello, Mr. Liu. How are you? You just asked a good question. It's actually really easy, the anti-recoil device effectively combines the two devices through a connecting host, the recoil is effectively reduced by the flow of the liquid and the compression of the gas when the gun is fired. Our traditional recuperators are available in both spring and air types. For this 120mm vehicle based mortar recuperator, we chose the liquid gas type. We continuously improve the design through our optimization that meets the requirements of our light off-road vehicle chassis design. Weapons and equipment that come off the production line have to be tested for firing accuracy in different environments. Of particular importance is the fit testing with a variety of different types of ammunition. Today is also the first time that this new 120mm vehicle mounted mortar has been adapted to satellite guided projectiles. This is a new type of satellite guided shell independently developed by China. It adjusts the flight attitude of shell through the pulse jet engine in its circle. Testing and verification with this new mortar with this type of shell is also an important job for artillery developers. The new export version of mortar shell is a kind of intelligent ammunition based on microelectronics, electronic computer and photoelectric conversion technology and automation technology. It can control the posture of the projectile according to a certain rule, correct the shooting error of the gunner, 
and deviate from trajectory to guide the warhead to accurately attack the target and achieve precise strike. Because this is completely developed with Beidou satellite navigation, this guided projectile replaced the original projectile fuse with a guidance system. The rudder, drive motor and control system were added to the middle of the projectile, and the warhead and tail were not changed. The inertial measurement unit, Beidou satellite navigation receiver, and navigation computer in the shell can measure the flight trajectory of the projectile, compare it with the pre-stored trajectory given by the mortar fire control system to get the error. After getting the error, the pulse jet engine in the middle of the shell will correct the deviation according to the existing error. This correction process continues until the shell hits the target. Because of its high precision and strong anti-interference ability, this kind of precision-guided artillery shells will consume much less when hitting enemy targets. For example, ordinary shells take a few rounds or a dozen rounds to destroy the target. With this type of satellite-guided shells, one or two rounds are enough. This satellite guidance can now be added to almost all artillery and mortar ammunition. China is in the leading position in this regard because of the Beidou satellite navigation system. With this guided mortar shell, the new vehicle-mounted mortar can be said to be even more powerful, with such a surgical type of precision strike capability. In order to test the shooting accuracy and striking effect, we specially surrounded a target bunker with a height of about 1.5 meters with wooden ammunition boxes. The staff placed eight target dummies in the target bunkers. Just now we have seen the scene of fire, smoke and dust everywhere. Let's take a look near the impact point. Here is the hit point. We found that the new guided mortar went over cover and hit the rear of the entire target range. It does not strike from the front like direct aiming weapons. This also verifies the unique curved firing performance of the mortar. During the flight, the pulse jet of the new guided missile corrects the trajectory constantly. So what about the corrected shooting accuracy? The staff are measuring. We need to get a field measured data. That's how far it hits away from the center of the aiming. 75 centimeters. 75 centimeters. Pretty accurate. A combination of the new 120 millimeters vehicle mounted mortar and the new satellite guided mortar shell can produce a such amazing accuracy. The precise striking comes from advanced guidance technology. It's like putting eyes and brains on a cannonball. It not only greatly improves the hit accuracy of mortar shells, but also effectively enhances the range and expands new combat functions. This new mortar also has high ammunition adaptability. It can use with a variety of ammunition such as conventional grenades and extended range bombs to complete a variety of combat missions, which provides multiple support for infantry combat operations. The vast Alexa Gobi is like a natural testing ground. Now the 120mm vehicle mounted mortar is running on the Gobi at a speed of 50 km per hour. The constantly undulating road surface and hard sand and gravel are a great test for the suspension and off-road performance of the vehicle. The Warrior 6x6 military off-road vehicle chassis has the combat capability of all-season mobility. This mortar can also be adapted to tracked vehicle chassis and other 4x4 or 8x8 vehicle platforms, which truly realized as one gun fits all to adapt to different battlefield environments. With an advanced fire control system, it is especially suitable for special forces and light forces to carry out mountain combat operations along our west borders, airborne operations or even urban street battles. Our mortar's development has gone through a long process from imitation to independent research and development. The future development of mortars must be a composite development of mechanization and intelligence. At the same time, we must continue on the road of unmanned control and precision strike aspects.